Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Mindless Horror Podcast presents Scare Act Appreciation Month. Uh, today we got a very special episode. We got a very award-winning monster oh here. Uh, yeah. We were blessed with the opportunity to uh, interview uh, Riley, who comes from CS. Riley, why don't you introduce yourself and your character? Yeah, hi guys. Uh, my name is Riley Palmentier. I am the bird familiar in the hollow at CS. Nice. Yeah, very, very, very great. Thank you. I appreciate yes. that. It's a lot of fun. It's a cannot miss character. It is. I mean, he he stands out for sure with that giant mohawk going on, especially in screaming and everything. <laughs> you can you sometimes you don't hear it before you see him. Exactly. I've, I've heard that several times before. It's crazy to me. But, but we love it. Funny. That's why we keep going to hollows. There we go. Perfect. Just see everyone good. and all the shenanigans that go on. <laughs> shenanigans is a very good word for it. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, so, first question um, about your character. Did, were, did you audition for that character? Or did you like bring that character to Han? So, the way, so what happened was, um, back in 2017 was my first year of the of being at Not Scary Farm, being in the Hollow. Um, and the previous year, 2016, was the first year that it debuted. Um, and that year, it was kind of just Scarecrows and then the Three Witches. That was it. There's no real, like, storyline to it. There kind of was, but no one really played to it. Yeah. So in 2017, they wanted to kind of amp it up and um, give it more of, like, show moments and um, of, a th like, a through line throughout the night. Yeah. So that's when they added the Witch Hunters um, and, you know, the shows throughout the night and the Big Midnight Show. Um, along with that came the idea of the three familiars, which were the bird, the cat, and the wolf. Um, and those were pitched to management. They liked it. So they had three people audition it, and they, they approved it. And they didn't really play a big role in um, the story so much. The only time they ever really popped up was they were the totems that uh, the witch hunters were trying to steal because of the source of the witch's power. Um, so that year, 2017, I was just a scarecrow. Um, I didn't even know the familiars were a thing. I wasn't sure, like, the whole storyline, really. Um, and that year, the bird was Daniel. His name was Daniel. He didn't work on last year or this year, um, but actually, the, the kind of tangent, funny story. They the first weekend they mixed up all the prosthetic faces, <laughs> so the bird was actually Carter, who was supposed to be the wolf. Daniel had some weird like dog face, and then Kathy, who was the cat, had a snake face. It was the <laughs> it was the weirdest thing. Um, so so anyway. The familiars were pitched that year, 2017, and then the following year, I wanted a makeup spot, and I really liked those characters, so I talked to Daniel, um, and he said that I could audition it, because he was going to audition for Ghost Town. Um, so we were in the audition room together, it was me, him, and Kathy, the three familiars of that year. Um, so I auditioned the bird, and I got it, he got the wolf, and Kathy was back as a cat. So it wasn't really my idea, but um, I liked the character, and then I tried to make it my own. So. I saw that a lot in the season. Probably, I mean, I didn't even get, to, I probably saw the, the guy who did it previously, but I just, I mean, this year is where we really paid attention to Han. Yeah. We all, you know, we, we go multiple nights and we just kind of sit in the scare zone and just really observe everything. Uh, this was like the first year where I actually was like blown away by like the amount of detail that actually, I mean, you know, you go through it one time, at, like you go for a, a night and you know, you just, you're getting so much to take in, yeah. but like when you go, you to go multiple nights, it's all the detail that you don't get to pay attention to. If you were just to go to one, it's like us sitting in the hollows, which is like paying attention to everything, watching yeah. everyone work. And there's so many like little moments too that you can just easily like miss. Or, like, exactly. Stupid little things that we'll do and like yeah. somehow get away with, but like it's fun to see those. You know? <laughs> we've seen that so many that, and we've loved every minute of it. Too. Yeah. Um, so this was your, did you say this was your first year on streets? No, no, no. This is my third year on streets. Third year on streets. Yeah. Okay. So my first year was 2017 as Scarecrow. 2018 uh, was my first year as the bird. And then this was my second year as the bird. Okay, wow, so, so you came, this is your third year at Knott's, right? Yeah. So you came right in on streets. Came right in on streets. Man, yeah, you lucky the jackpot right there. I know, I'm um, pretty lucky. That, that, that must have been a cool audition right there. It was, yeah, it was cool. We actually, my open hire audition, I, um, we were in the front showroom of Paranormal. Yeah. Um, so that's where we got to audition, so that was pretty cool. And it was, it was a group audition, so it was less nerve-wracking. Um, but yeah, I just kind of knew I wanted the hollow, and I was like, yeah, I'll just audition the scarecrow until I get to. Um, when when did you know you first wanted to become like a scare actor? Okay, this is interesting. So I, as a kid, um, on Halloween night, I would always just like dress up. My aunt would do my makeup as like 
one year I was a mummy, one year I was like a vampire, you know. Um, and I wouldn't go trick or treating, I would just stand in my front yard and just scare people. <laughs> Literally, yeah. like, I think maybe twice I went trick or treating. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think it really like dawned on me probably in 2010, which is the first time I went to a scary farm as a guest. Okay. Um, and I remember walking in through um, the little gate that's like right next to um, what the chicken dinner restaurant. You can walk in through that side kind of. Um, and then the first thing I saw was um, Lucifer, the werewolf, who's haunt legend. He's fantastic. Yeah. Um, he was standing next to a vending machine and he just slid out and just dropped this group of girls. It was <laughs> the funniest thing. And it scared the shit out of me at the time, yeah, yeah. but I saw it and I was like, that was cool. I want to do that. Cool. Yep. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. I mean, I love hearing the stories of how people get into this business and this just how they became fans of yeah. the overall records. And you guys, you get to see a little behind the scenes of what, what inspired them. Yeah. It's usually other legends that you see out in the streets. Oh, yeah, definitely. That, like, really inspire you to come in. Oh, I have my list of, of people that I take inspiration from, like fully, not even for just my character alone, but just for scaring in general, for whatever character I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, you've been on streets for three years. What was it like your first year now, then comparing it to now? Like, how do you think you've grown so much since then? Yeah, I think I have grown a lot. Uh, my first year, uh, I was kind of a generic character, so I tried a bunch of different things that I thought could work. Um, and I, you know, <laughs> I. There's a video on YouTube that's of opening night 2017, and it's like still daylight out because it was, or it was like 7 p.m. The park had just opened, and you see me walking as a scarecrow, and I look at it now, and I'm like, what the hell was I doing? <laughs> it was, it, I just think I looked so ridiculous, but um, <laughs> I, it's the funniest thing. But like, yeah, I evolved my character through that to this weird, like I was like a crawling thing. I had like super long, like hay hair. Um, it was crazy. I actually won Rookie of the Year that year, too. Look at you. Oh, wow. <laughs> he's an award winning monster. Rookie of the Year to Monster of the Year. That must be such an accomplishment. It's, I mean, it's a really good feeling. Oh, yeah. It's really I mean, good. It's well deserved. Nice. Like I said, we've seen you a lot this season, and it's just your character is terrifying. Thank you. It's, it's so good. Um, I think you bring a contagious energy to to the monsters around you. Oh, okay. I didn't think of it that way. That's very yeah. cool. Because like, I feel like everyone feeds off of each other's energy. And, yeah, that's very true. Um, yeah. And so, like, when you come in, and you get a scare. You hear it. You can hear another monster getting a scare. So like all that energy really just yeah. brings it. It's, really brings the nightmare to life. It's fun when, um, especially on those busy nights when um, we're just getting scare after scare after scare. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you you can see you know I'll see um, like Doink and Boomer the Troll Twins hit a slide and like drop someone, and then I'll see CJ and Hudson on the other side the scarecrows just okay. like going off it's and it's like the best feeling it's, it's like so, a domino's falling oh in. absolutely like yeah and know. so when you see your friends doing well too it really helps you like with that morale it's like oh shit like yeah. this is tight now are you a slider too i am a slider so, i got slider of the year as well this year you got slider of the year as well man. i did i got awards for days wait so did you get most improved too might as well no 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 no, no. <laughs> uh jordan wozniak the uh cat familiar actually got the most, most improved too. Okay. very well deserved she's fantastic um, now sliding in cs man that that place is Little, like, oh my god, it is the best ground in the park. It is so smooth. Yeah. Everyone is jealous. The only places that are better um, are right in front of the Boardwalk Ballroom, which is now you can't slide there because that's where the Cube for Dark Ride is. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then in the in front of the Birdcage Theater in Ghost Town and in front of the Ghost Rider exit. Yeah. Those are like kind of the the good spots. But basically all of Camp Snoopy, that it's butter. Yeah. It's so smooth. So smooth, and you guys get the opportunity to kind of hit longer slides. If you oh, absolutely! Well. Yeah, because it's like, the, yeah, like you said, the ground is so smooth. We saw so many people this year alone sliding, and they would go for a while. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, wow. It's you know, it's hard to stop sometimes too. Like, yeah. we would hit slides, and then sometimes I would just put my foot out and stop on a planter, and then hit another slide from that, and just go to like it's because <laughs> like, it's so thing. yeah, you literally. Ball. But go. the very back area of camp where it's wide open, yeah. and then by the Sierra Sidewinder sign where it's also very open. Those are the two spots where it's just like the yeah. best to hit it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long have you been sliding for? Um, I've been sliding probably for about five-ish years. Oh, um, it was very like, when I first started, I would like go practice at my old middle school because there was like one little spot of like smooth ground. Um, oh yeah, you go to these high schools and stuff, the hallways and stuff. Yeah, no, exactly. Then, so like um, but I never like, 
took it seriously because I knew I couldn't slide until my second year of streets. Yeah. 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 Um, so I would go. Yeah, you know, there's like the Brink Chapman Sports Park that everyone goes to. Yeah. So I'd go and like hang out, kind of like slide around a little bit, never take it seriously. But when it was the uh, my second year of streets when I could slide and we have to take that test, then I started taking it seriously and actually going hard. And um, now I like start to do like tricks and like jump people and that whole kind of thing. So it's really fun. Definitely. Um, yeah, and, and it's funny that you brought up the uh, the fact that like sometimes it's hard to stop because there was times in the hallway when we saw the, the freaking the scarecrows who were, or whoever was sliding and facing soldiers sometimes. And one of the scarecrows actually stopped, and jumped inside the planner, and kind of just stood there <laughs> and like you know act like it was part of his thing. And he yeah. just stood there and looked at people and all. Just like <laughs> it's shit like that happens all the time. I mean, like I've definitely run into monsters before. Like it was an accident, but there's one one year. It was last year. My first year was the bird, 2018. Uh, there was a group of people here, and I was coming this way, and then Seth, who's in Ghost Town now, um, he was in CS, he was a tree beast, he was coming this way, and we both hit slides, and just boom, fully ran, we didn't see each other, but fully ran into each other, we kind of just like had a moment, looked at each other, and we're like, you good? And we're like, yeah, and we just went opposite ways. And that guy's a freaking monster. Oh, he here. is, he, I think he's my biggest inspiration when it comes to sliding. That guy can make any surface for it's insane. I model all my slides after him. He taught me how to hit slides like him. Yeah. Do, you, do you do the hair flip too? I don't do the hair flip. No, I don't have the beautiful luscious hair that Seth has. But <laughs> I think if I did, I would implement that as well. I'd be like, stop. Yeah. Oh my god. No, we saw him so much in Ghost Town this year. Even like on the more rough surfaces, I was like, how are you doing? This? He just. Oh my god. You should see his gloves. That shit is like. It's like he uses like welding gloves, yeah. and he uses the same pair for like that he's had for the last couple years, and it's like. That shit is just like molten steel, just, Did you see that? it's just like melted into the glove. It's basically it's just his hand now, like, Did you see the freaking battle scars. And it's all flat, there. yeah, because yeah. he smacks that ground. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> hard. Um, Did you benefit from any of his churros when he was in CS? His what? Churros, because I oh. meant... <laughs> the churros, yeah, so <laughs> that year was weird. We would like get guests to buy us churros and like ices and shit. It was weird. I don't even know what that I was like. One funny that a lot of guests were stupid enough to do it. Oh yeah, yeah. Would, so <laughs> stupid. That was that's another example of like the shenanigans that we do <laughs> over in Camp Snoopy that you don't really see throughout the rest of the park. Yeah, yeah. Because it's just so ridiculous. God. Oh my god, dude, that's that's hilarious that he would even go about just asking that and someone yeah. like, be stupid enough to buy it for them. And we all started doing it. We're just like, just buy me a churro. And like yeah. we'd intimidate them and be like, you buy me a churro. And they're like, yeah. what? And I said, you heard me. And they do it. It's. <laughs> It's hilarious. The thing is, like, you can get oh, away man, with. I can't wait till break now. I no, get literally. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. That's, so <laughs> that's funny. Um, so the story of the hollows is just very. It's a very interesting one, and yeah. we've heard it from a little bit from Dylan. Whereas, it, you know, as the night progresses, we're seeing little by little ones lead to this big finale. Yes. Um, were you ever part of any of that this season? The story. Yeah, the story. Of yeah. So I was in the uh, finale show. Okay. Um, basically, the whole thing with that is. At that point in the night, the witch hunters have gotten all the totems of the familiars that gives the witches their power, um, and they are going to burn the wicker man, basically, to show that they have dominance over, uh, excuse me, over the hollow now. Um, so, uh, in that show, we, it's me, it's the three familiars, um, Doink and Boomer, the Troll Twins, um, and a couple of soldiers, who we kind of come out at that point, because we've like lost our power too, as well. Um, and then throughout the show, the witches cast this spell um, in which they give us back our powers and then we go in and we kill the witch hunter and all that. Yeah. Um, and then at the very end of the show, the wicker man lights on fire and we all run out and we get on top of the rocks and do like a whole like screech and kind of show yeah. off a little bit. And then yeah. Pop up. yeah. The parkour class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no, trust me. We had to change it too because the um, originally all last year and then the first two weekends of this year, um, the way we would start the show was we would have a certain sound cue that we'd listen for and then when that happened we'd go and walk through the crowd that were like gathered around the rocks and we would jump on top of the rocks and kind of just stand there and be intimidating for a second um and then we would you know crawl down the rocks but we, kind of a safety hazard because when we go down the back side of the rocks it looks like it's just nothing yeah. and so people were concerned that we were like literally just falling <laughs> so we, we changed it to where at the beginning of the show we listened for that sound cue but instead we start inside the cave yeah, and we would out, come yeah. out and then go up the top of the rocks and go back down I saw that I saw that a lot this year too when they would come out and jump on the rocks yeah. some guys would yell some stuff like I'm feeling like killing tonight or something 
Yeah, that. some stuff like that. Some things that are weird, maybe shouldn't be said, but like, <laughs> you know. So what's been your favorite scare this season? Like my favorite scare this season? There's um, probably been so many. I, I don't know if this is my favorite, but what jumped out to me was there was, um, this was opening night, and I went in and did some like little quick scare that I didn't think was anything. The girl like script or whatever. And then Justin Buds, who was the uh, witch hunter's assistant, came up to me on break and he was like, you made that girl pee. And I was like, what are you talking, <laughs> what? And he was like, yeah, there was a puddle on the ground, like her pants were wet. And I was like, you're joking. <laughs> and so the rest of the night I was like, all right, this cool. I did it. Um, <laughs> any other good scares? I mean, it's really fun when, um, <laughs> so there's this other thing we would do where we have this little, uh, there's like a little like, face painting shack that they use yeah. during the day. During Scary Farm, they don't use it, so we kind of hide back there. And there's a light angled so that people walking by it can't see us that we're standing in there. Yeah. So we always hit slides from there. And then whenever we make someone fall, <laughs> we would all run out of there and twerk on them. Yeah, yeah. we saw so, it. Yeah. Was that was <laughs> That was, <laughs> whenever that happened, that was fun. But um, yeah, there was one too where I um, hit a slide into a light that was angled in someone's face, um, just right in front of them, and like jumped up, and it was, it was crazy, and he was holding a plate from Panda Express, just fully went boom, and just Aww. fried rice everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. It was hilarious. I love that when people can't control like, their, what they're doing, it's like... It's so silly to me, because like I, when I go to like haunts and stuff, I'm like, oh, just like, nothing. And I, granted, it's because I work at one, and I'm not like... I'm kind of desensitized to it now, but people have such crazy reactions. I think it's hilarious. Well, I mean, I know every time I'm going through like ghost town, like because usually we eat a funnel cake, you know, every weekend or every other weekend. Yeah. I'll be going through the like, please don't scare me because yeah. I know I'm about to lose uh -huh. this damn thing. No. I am losing 11 bucks. Well, there was <laughs> on my night off when I went as a guest this year. I uh, I was walking through ghost town and Lucio, who um, hostel, hostel, yeah, yeah. He first of all, he's insane. He's like, fantastic. A whole new fantastic. Um, he would do this thing where he would put like ranch in yeah. his mouth. Yeah. Many times. I, I didn't know he did that because like I didn't ever, I only went as a guest once. It's a whole new and so I was walking through eating my like chili cheese fries and then he comes up to me and like does it right in front of me and I almost threw up. I was like, what yeah. the <laughs> fuck? I didn't throw my fries anywhere, but yeah. And then yeah. milk too. He was very interested in my fries and wouldn't leave me milk. So, yeah. <laughs> so milk, is, milk is a whole new level. He's fantastic. Of fun. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, with Hostel Man, I, at one time, it's my favorite story sharing, at one time I saw him scare someone, they dropped something, and he landed on his knee pad. And then he goes like this, oh, no. and then licks it, That's so and weird. walks away. I'm just like, I look over at this guy, I'm like, it's, like it's disgusting. Things. Yeah. And there's so, oh my God. I will say, though, to attest to that, when you're in the moment and shit like that happens, you just kind of go kind of just do it like I've definitely eaten things that have been on the ground oh, he, he, and like hostel is taking yeah, to a whole new level he's he, gross though like he, he will eat ranch <laughs> spit it on the floor and lick it up that's gross I will not do that yeah I will not do that that is so nasty I don't know what comes through his head when he's playing that character he's we're just gonna so see him, in we're character. gonna see him tonight and I'm gonna talk, oh yeah I'm gonna talk to him about that like, oh my god you sure you're okay buddy is that really you yeah or is it you know it's like what is your favorite scare tactic my favorite scare tactic um my screech probably um, just because it's so loud yeah, yeah. and it actually like it doesn't hurt to do which is weird a lot of people always are like how the hell like how do you are able to talk at the end of the night and it's I have no answer I think maybe it's because it's not outward I like inhale when oh. I do it um, so it doesn't really irritate my throat as much but yeah my screech definitely like if nothing else is working I can do that and then like, yeah, it will get someone just because it's solely just so loud, you know. Have you heard of this guy story too? No. This guy. I already know where we're going. He didn't go for it. <laughs> he knows every podcast that you're going to Falls asleep during Oh! What? <laughs> okay. Yes, I, do you, okay. I can drink no, enormous amounts of caffeine. Okay. Still be tired, you know, work. Eight, my eight to five. Go. Without fail, about 10.30, 10 o'clock, I will, like, lose steam. Because, like, usually at the beginning of the night, we'll be going, boom, hitting a couple mazes. But then, you know, the lines will get long. So we're like, okay, let's go let's go spend some more time in the scare zones. Right. We start sitting there an hour, <laughs> and then I'm just going to be, like... You just doze off. Just dozing. What? So yeah. I'm saying this right now. Okay. You see us in the halls, don't you? 
I can wake him up. I'll wake you up. I got you. I'm letting, oh. I'm letting all his characters know on purpose. Now. Okay. And yeah, I mean, you that's know, good to know. When we tell people that, it's like, how, how do you even do that at an event like that? Yeah. It's like, especially him, he gets scared easy. Oh, I'm a scaredy really? cat, so if you ever need an easy scare, so if you're having a bad night, loud noise is all you need. Oh, okay. Good yeah, loud noise, I'm done. There you go. So if, you, <laughs> if, you, if, you know, if you're not having the best night, you know, yeah. just find two giant tall guys. Just find you guys, do a little screech, game over, that's it. It's yeah, over. perfect. Or just come out of me and like, uh, just hit me out of nowhere. Yeah. Even better. Yep. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's good to know. But yeah, I always tell people the sleeping story because one, hopefully it keeps them awake this season. Next season. And two, um, if you guys see him sleeping, fuck him. Perfect. Wait, go on. I love that. It's like catching on camera. <laughs> Put it in the compilation. Yeah. It's all good to go. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, we, uh, we, we uh, I think towards the middle of the season, we, I, I remember one night, the first time I started going to the halls, we walked through there, but we never actually sat and watched. So, mm -hmm. like, there was one night where I had gotten off an overtime shift at like 10 o'clock, and it was like it's a Thursday, you know, for the conference. I got to this cool when I was still in places. Mm -hmm. So, I went over there and I and I sat in the hollows for a bit, and I was just blown away just by everybody. Yeah. Because, like, we saw, we sat in Ghost Town most of the season, and then, you know, I wanted to branch out and just check everything else, but, you know, everyone else is just as talented. Yeah, but it's kind of like. CS has always been the zone that's kind of um, a little bit overlooked, mm -hmm. um, but we, especially this year, we had a lot of hidden talent, mm -hmm. um, and I know everyone, you know, thinks that Ghost Town is the zone, and they are, rightfully so, they're fantastic, fantastic talent over there, Definitely. but um, we have some very, very formidable monsters in our zone that, like, are so good, and I mean, if you think of the history of the Hollow, and not just Hollow, sorry, Camp Snoopy Street, CS, um, some of the best sliders have come Camp, from CS. Camp Snoopy, yeah. Some of the best sliders. Yeah, yeah, a lot of legends actually started at Camp Snoopy. Lots of legends started at Camp Snoopy. Um, a lot of traditions that happen at Haunt to this day started at Camp Snoopy. All those jerseys you see people wearing yeah. started in CS. Oh, wow. Uh, banquets started in CS. You know, we were in first organized like after Haunt events that we do, like we, uh, like uh, Broom Ball, like yeah. Rage Tag and all that. Yeah. CS has like, very, very deep roots, and they started all these traditions because they were such an underdog. Yeah, yeah. Um, back in the day, back when um, it was like, uh, it was called Street Punks. Yeah. And they were like, everyone looked at them like, ah, you guys suck, like whatever, Ghost Town is the place to be. Yeah. And they punks, really I made like their own. Movie. Yeah. I like it a lot. I mean, because they kind of just had like, bottom of the barrel masks, they would just like pick random ones out and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then when the gauntlet came around is when it really, like, Everyone was like, oh shit. Yeah, we Oh shit, like, CS. CS. And then everyone wanted to be in CS. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah no, because I was telling that at the beginning of the season, I mean, this is a very underrated scare zone. Absolutely. Yeah. This is a, such a good, dimly lit scare zone. It's good for scares. Um, and the ambiance helps it so much too. Like, towards yeah. that back area with all the trees, I mean, you're basically yeah. in a forest. Right? And, and, and the music, like, you know, is going. Um, then you got Pumpkin Eater. That, yeah, like, this feeds into, into it. Feeds into it. Yeah, it's good that you bring up the uh, soundtrack because I always say that that is the soundtrack in CS is the best in the entire park, in my opinion. Well, there's like this one part. It's like there's like a clack the clapping. Thing. And I always yeah. I always just do the clacker goes every time. We always that's what the little thing we always like yeah. like that. But um, that soundtrack is the majority of is majority of it is from that movie The Witch. Okay. Um, and then from the video game Bloodborne as well. So the witch, it's, that's the one that it's like an old timey like. It's the one Period where it's spelled with like two, two V's. V's. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, like, I think that director just came out with a new movie too recently. I think so too. Because they're making a big deal about when he, when he came out with a new movie that, oh, you gotta watch this movie first. Because he does, his horror is a lot different from horror. So. It's slow burn, fantastic. Yeah. I gotta watch it. I've heard a lot of good things. It's fantastic. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, that's good to know that there's a lot of information mm -hmm. about it. When you initially auditioned, were you auditioning to go on streets? Yeah, I knew that I wanted to go in. I wanted to go on streets because I knew I had friends that um, already worked on and that were on streets, um, and so you know through them I kind of met everyone, and so I kind of knew most of the people that I was going to be working with. And did I, you have a street zone in mind, or did you just like anything? I uh, I wanted to be in the Hollow. Um, okay. I always course. wanted to be in CS because uh, when I went my first year, 2010, mm -hmm. um, that was the first year of Necropolis. And I walked through there, and I was like, oh my god, this is the coolest thing. I wanted to be in Necropolis so bad, um, but it left before I got there. It yeah. sucks. But cool thing is, I actually have two costumes from Necropolis. Oh, nice. Oh, really? Yeah. I have two costumes. Um, so cool. 
At least that's the closest I'll get. I Unless they bring it back later. But we'll got some memorabilia. Exactly. So that's yeah. cool. Was that during like one of those like sales that they? Like, yeah. So at the yeah at the end of Han every year they have a wardrobe sale. Um, and last year, I remember word got out they're selling the crop list, like all the costumes and stuff. And so all the talent that worked in the crop list, they got first picks of their costume that they wore. But then it was like a free for all. And luckily, I was uh, I'm lucky enough to know Carter uh, Carter Hodges, who is um, he was a talent for two years in the Hollow, uh, but now he is uh, in wardrobe and he does makeup. Um, he's oh my god, one of the most talented people I know. But he knew about the wardrobe sale and he was helping with it. And so he texted me the night before and he's like, do you have money right now? I can literally save you one. And I was like, absolutely, yes. <laughs> and so he got me he got me a really cool embellished one that they used for the opening of Voyage to the Iron Reef. Oh, it nice. has all these keys and like gears all over it and stuff. And then the next day I got to hunt early backstage and I was like just sitting there waiting. And I, they were all lined up on the rack and I was like, oh my God. And then um, they made us line up and I just picked a different one. So I have two now. Yeah, wow. that's always cool. Mm -hmm. That was like uh, totally unrelated to Haunt. But that was like that was how I felt with uh, when they closed down Tower of Care. Oh yeah. On one of those costumes. So I like, feel that. I know. And then like Disney was like super strict. I'm like, nope, we want those back. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I know they had to. And I was like, oh man, that sucks. <sighs> that's rough. My hands and he's like, mm -hmm. I love those. Right? That right? Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. Um, um, what is your favorite thing to do every night to prepare? You like to listen to music? Yeah, I have a little, I wouldn't say ritual, but I have a little um, kind of thing that I do where I'll, um, I get ready and I put on all my Under Armour and stuff and like powder up and contacts in, hair and stuff. Um, I always have to slick back my hair because my mohawk, it was a, um, it was a headband yeah. that like went down. It was weird. Um, Carter Hodges, again, he made that for me. Nice. Very talented. But yeah, so um, I would always do that. I would get an energy drink, um, and then I'd put in my headphones, and I'd listen to this song called The Dance of Death, which is um, the music from the trailer of Midsummer. Nice. And it, that, it just pumps me up, because it sounds like um, kind of the soundtrack a little bit, but it's, it like builds, and it's, cr it's super intense, and very, very scary. Um, so that's like my kind of ritual. And then when I drive to Han as well, I have a playlist that I listen yeah. to, just see. So in the mode, you know. What is what is it? C four bang? What's the energy drink? Uh no. <laughs> so actually, <laughs> in twenty eighteen, I started uh, using bang like the powder, but I would just dry scoop it. I wouldn't mix anything. I just like, you know, and that hard not work. good. That don't <laughs> do that. Hard. Do not do that. If you're planning on working on, do don't it. Don't no, do I'm that. Kidding, no. um, so I there's other energy drink called Celsius. Okay. That's like it's um, it's really actually healthy for you. It helps you like. It, like burns fat and stuff. It's crazy. Um, it has like no calories. I don't even know, but it's it's like a natural caffeine kind of thing. So that's what I drink. Nice. Yeah. I heard C4 was currency backstage. C4. Oh yeah. It's everyone has C4. Like even sometimes I would ask Seth to backstage before I had my makeup done, because he would have C4. I'd be like, hey yo, let me get a little bit of that. He's like, fuck you, dude. And I was like, alright. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, everyone loves C4 and. You know, usually on Saturday nights is when people like you'll see the, the bottles of it out. You know, yep, it's a busy night. It's a busy night. Yeah, everybody, everybody, everybody wants it tonight. It's yeah. going hard. Yeah. Um, what was your favorite thing about? Uh, now there's a bunch of amazing characters in the halls. So what was your favorite thing like, going around the uh, Or did you just like? You, it was one of those things where you just kind of bounced off everyone. I kind of bounced off every everyone. Um, for the most part, when I'm scaring, I'm kind of in my own head and in my zone. And I don't really, I kind of, um, I don't really scare with anyone, per se. I like just being by myself and focusing on myself and my scares. But um, I gotta give a shout out to my hooligans, um, Doink and Boomer, CJ, and Hudson. Um, they're the troll twins and then two other um, scarecrows. We would, if I would scare with anyone, it would be with them. Um, and we had, oh my god, so much shenanigans. It, it just absolutely ridiculous. We would um, have this thing every, like Friday, Saturday night called Hooligan Hour, yeah. where at 11 p.m. at the back of camp in the big open area, we would just go ham and like scare the shit out of everyone. And like everyone knew it was Hooligan Hour because people were just running left <laughs> and right. It was so fun. But we would do stupid shit. Like we would go to the border of Fiesta Village and we'd be like Border Patrol and like, hit, <laughs> like we would just stand there and be like, what? Wrong neighborhood, get out. And they'd be like, what? Like all these girls are like, we also got people to buy us churros. 
Nice. Right there, so there's a <laughs> the there's a tro right stand there. right there, and so oh, we'd all stand there, and everyone's the tradition like, tradition continues. Yeah, everyone's like, oh, what's going on, you know? And then like, I would like we would steal people's basketballs and like run off with them, <laughs> and then like, yeah, the hooligans. We just do dumb shit, but we are we like also. Um, we really help, like, if someone's getting fucked with that night or, like, messed with, we, like, go up to that person and, like, fuck with them and get them out. And, you know, we definitely um, break the rules a little bit, too. It's all right. To, so that you gotta do to you make gotta sure do our people, people are out. safe. Yeah. Yeah. Man, yeah. We, we saw a lot of them. Uh, just the, the asshole guests. And stuff. Yeah. It's just, it's one of those things where it's, like, people think when they get they pay for this ticket, they think they own they lose all sense at the gate, really. Yeah. They forget that we're real people. Yeah. And we know that going into it. Yeah. But, you know, it's not fun when you get clocked in the face or when someone tries to rip my beak off. No, so, man. that sucks. Yeah. That's why I think with us, it's a little bit different with us because we, uh, we would film a lot. And, like, I knew my boundaries as far as, okay, obviously don't be that asshole that stands in the middle waiting for someone. Cause you're going to ruin the scare for a while. There you go. But, you know, my, my thing was, like, I was on the sideline. So I would be either in the shadows so no one would see me while I was filming, or I'd be just off to the side sitting on like the rocks where you could sit. You know, I, I would respect you guys' boundaries. Too. And we, we recognize that. Like, we would talk about it too. We know when all like the photographers are there that um, like some of the sides or like the people recording and stuff, we see the same people that come through. Yeah. And we know that um, if anything goes down to that like you guys are there and you'll have our backs. Oh yeah. Definitely. So we appreciate that very much. There was a, I think we had a couple of times that we did that this season. They actually had the monsters come like, did you see something? Yeah. And yeah. the person I was like, yeah. yeah. So, what do you guys need? We can tell you whatever you guys need. You know, it's like, you know, so we, we, we call ourselves like the unofficial security. Yeah. You know and I mean? we love having that safety net because there are those, like, the fans and stuff and the diehards that go all the time that, like, end up kind of like being our security when security's not around. Yeah. yeah. So well, it's, it's really like, nice. You know, you're, you, we're sitting there as fans trying to enjoy the show, and when someone comes and ruins that, you know, it yeah. kind of ruins it for not only you guys, but it ruins it for us, too, because it's like, we're trying to have fun, get a laugh, and see you guys do your job, right. and at the same time, you guys are trying to do your job, mm -hmm. but then you have people that come up and try to interfere with that, and it's like, it ruins it just for everybody. Right, yeah. So it's like, Definitely. we want to we want to ensure that, like, hey, fuck off. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. go away. So it was really funny, because especially if both of us were wearing, like, all black on a certain night, mm -hmm. I just noticed the different presence when people would see us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we, were, we would wear black a lot. So yeah. It's like people would look at us like, oh, better calm down. Like, yeah, you better. <laughs> you better. That's hilarious. Or they'd be asking us for directions. Oh, there was just, oh really? There was just one kid in, in Ghost Town who would go up to the boss and be like, oh, you can't touch me. And I'd yell, but I can. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. So, like, the, the little kid saw me and like, just got quieter and walked away. Throwing your flashlights off. Yeah, yeah. That, oh my god. Tell me about the flashlights. Oh, okay. I know. Flashlights, dude. Well, it sucks too because the majority of us wear contacts, yeah. colored yeah. contacts. Yeah. Um, me personally, I wear full sclera contacts that go over my entire eye, um, and those are already a bitch just to wear. Yeah. Um, but especially when someone has their bright flash on and just in your face recording you, it's just like I can't, literally can't see anything, and I have to stop mid scare and walk away because I don't want to risk hurting them. Definitely. You know. Um, yeah, oh my god, it just it sucks so much, and I can't even see that well to begin with yeah. because those scleras are like they're just rough, man. Yeah. I mean, I'm used to them, but yeah, the flashlights are a problem. But we do have a lot of people like you guys and like you know our um, our TCs and our our leads and stuff that are very very good at being like, hey, turn your flashlight off. They have these super super bright flashlights yeah. that are it, it's just ridiculous, it's like right in their face, yeah. Turn it off. Yeah, Turn it off. It's great. Yeah, I love those guys, man. They come in and save the freaking day. So thank God someone's here. We're so thankful for them. Yeah, those guys are. Um, there's been, like I said, so much shenanigans in this scare zone a lot sure that we love watching. And we love watching it even when it takes a serious turn because it really expands the whole, the whole story of the horror. Um, with it being, of course, this year, they, they took a whole new transition story wise as far as the ceremony. Um, how do you see that affecting the hollows? They get a little eventually start tying in more and more. With Sarah Marshall? Yeah, because I mean, I saw a lot of the witch stuff already kind of. Right. I was like, okay, that's a little half right Um, I'm not sure how much of that I see bleeding into the hollow. Um, mainly because I feel like. 
I don't know. It, that's an interesting question because Sarah Marshall is kind of the whole thing of Not Scary Farm as a whole. Yeah. Not just Ghost Town. Yeah. But she's not really present in The Hollow. She's exactly. not really present in the story of The Hollow. But um, it's happened before where overall themes have come in. Like uh, a couple years back where they had the Deadly Seven. Yeah. They would roam around and go into each scare zone and kind of so they tie their story in. I don't know. Um, I, I could see her having a presence in the hollow, yeah. especially because we have witches. Especially. Yeah. Um, that's I think, how, that's, cause that's how I saw it. Like yeah. Witches I, I'm, I'm curious to see. It's it, interesting. It looks like they're starting to start something now leading up to the 50th. Into the 50th. That's, you know, and we don't know exactly what's going to happen in the 50th. We've heard rumors and speculations mm -hmm. and, yeah. and all that. Um, but it, it seems to be leading up to something for sure. That's my little thing. I'm hoping I'm hoping the entire park is extra fifty. Every year, you know, something's gonna come in different, something's gonna change. Right. Leading up to that fifty. Because that's that's the big one. Yeah. Like forty was big, but fifty is gonna be that's like half the bigger. Day. It's gonna be it's insane. Like, yeah, like, yeah, that's gonna be. Fun. And I know I already know people who have certain plans for for that year to like go certain spots. So it's yeah. gonna be very very a very good year. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, so we are still, but I think we got like three. Was this forty-seven? I think, I think it's just forty-seven. Forty-seven, so, yeah. yeah. Next year we're forty-eight, but so we got a couple more years. Twenty-twenty-two, I think. Right. Maybe I don't know. Just to get to that road there, man, it's gonna, it's gonna be interesting. Oh, we're all looking forward to it. We're we're very excited. Um, is there anything as a group that you guys do to prepare yourselves every night to get in? Yeah, so we have um every night around six o'clock we have a little uh, meeting, uh, backstage by Warehouse P. Um, where we kind of, Keegan, who is our cast lead, who is fantastic, we love Keegan, um, he would kind of circle us up and he would give us a little pep talk and he would tell us, all right, we have uh, this many people coming tonight. Um, if it's a busy night, he would say, um, like, scare and go, don't linger. Um, you know, they would oftentimes, on those Saturdays that are super busy, they would pull back our borders, mainly from the front, um, so that we couldn't go past the Sierra Sidewinder sign just because it, it squeezes, it bottlenecks too much mm -hmm. up there. Because that line for Pumpkin Eater, man, it go, it goes killing. all the way back. Yeah. All I've seen it wrap all the way towards the like end of the rocks, towards the back of Camp Fort. Wow, absolutely insane. Yeah. So yeah, we uh, yeah, at six we have this little meeting, and then we always end it with um, we put all our hands in and we say fired up, which nice. is kind of our our champ. I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah. more because I think it's a major part of this You see it everywhere, whether it be you know, behind the scenes or on stage, you see it everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, and we hear a lot about the teamwork that goes into, you know, bringing this event together. I think it's and we, you know, out there we all have each other's backs, regardless of if we like each other or not. Yeah. It's, it's kind of us against the guest, almost. Yeah. yeah. Where, if I, like, hate this person that's going for a scare next to me, if someone punches in the face, I'm going to be the first one there to be like, what the fuck are you doing? You fuck off and grab that person and make sure that they're safe, you know? Um, so yeah, teamwork is definitely a big, big thing for all of us. And that's cool. I mean, even though you hate the person, it's like, yeah. at the end of the day, it's, it's like you guys are monsters. You guys Not are saying like, I hate anyone, but no, like... No, I know, yeah. <laughs> Theoretically, yeah. yeah. He's just, yeah in well, example. there's some... Uh, <laughs> no, no, but in, 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 in <laughs> the example world of like, you know, I hate this person, but it's like, if someone can hit them, you know, it's like, the fuck, dude? Yeah. This is my people, you know? Exactly. Like, don't mess with my people, you know? Exactly. It's like, I get that a lot, man, and I respect that a lot. Uh, all right. I, I got us here. Go for it. <laughs> so, right, how did you feel winning Monster of the Year? I felt fantastic. It was, um, so this was actually my second year in a row winning Monster of the Year. Oh, it's two I years won, in a row. I won it in 2018 oh, as well. Oh. I did. Um, so it was, it, it's a weird, weird feeling because people tell you, they're like, oh, yeah, you're going to get Monster this year. And I hate that because it's like, I don't. Because then what if you don't, and then you look like an idiot. But uh, it was cool. This year they actually did... Um, so the way it works usually for each zone is they have um, different categories, and you vote yourself, like the monsters yeah. vote. Um, so like the, there's six main ones, um, and then there's a bunch of different ones, like little ones for the hollow. Um, I think for the six main ones are Monster of the Year, Slider of the Year, uh, Most Creative, Best Boys, Dedication and Endurance, and uh, Rookie of the Year. Yeah. Um, and so everyone always has some predictions. I'm like, ooh, who's going to win, you know? Um, and so 2018, everyone was like, you you are getting this. If you don't get it, you're like, I'm leaving. That kind of thing. And I was like, that's 
very nice of you to say, but I I don't take compliments very well, so I'm like, yeah, thanks. It's kind of like I was like, Ugh. yeah. So um, I won it that year. That was great. I won best voice that year too, which was really cool. Um, and then this year, I was like going into, I was like, I already won Monster. I'm not like, I'm gonna take a step back, let someone else get it. Because I think with a big award like that, I think that it's cool if someone different gets it every year. Um, and then you gotta get. God damn it! Yeah. Well, I'm not complaining. Right? No, yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah. But it's one of those things where I was like, I want to see someone like shine, and I want someone to beat me. Yeah. You know, I want someone to do better than me. Yeah. Because yeah. um, that way, it's like almost a competition to where like us competing against each other to be better makes the zone better. Yeah. Um. So this year it was really cool because um, they ha implemented this system where we had to wear this lanyard, um, and at the end of each week they would give away. Um, Scream of the Week and Monster of the Week. Um, so these little pins, and they were voted on by management and stuff. And so at the end of the year, um, they gave out a Monster of the Year like certificate that was from management that wasn't voted on by um, by our talent. Mm -hmm. um, so they gave that to me as well. Um, so that was cool getting that from management, but the uh, voting one, I wasn't really expecting, to be completely honest. Yeah. Um, going into the awards banquet, I thought that I was going to get Slider, okay. um, which was nice that I did as well, but um, yeah, man, it's really weird, and I mean, I'm so grateful, I'm really glad that um, I have a really good team behind me that, like, will support me, um, like, as a monster and stuff. Yeah. Um, no, that's, that's awesome yeah. that even, like, you know, management gave you something. It's really cool, and, like, it makes me feel like... I'm like I'm doing it right, you know. To make you want to come back every year. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. I plan on doing this for a long time, um, awesome. regardless of if I'm in the same zone or in the same character. We'll see about that. But yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's really good. It makes me not want to leave the character, or, yeah. you know, or like see someone else do it, you know. Well, what's cool about this is before we went on the air, you were telling us that you're uh, theater. I am. Yeah. So I mean. How do, how do you look at that? Like, that helping with your character? Does oh, that help a lot? absolutely helps. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the things I've learned in my acting classes and stuff, not so much the acting itself, but, like, the character development side, yeah. I spend a lot of time um, coming up with weird little things and, like, writing about my character that I never, like, will outwardly, um, like, demonstrate on street. Mm -hmm. But it's, like, things that my character likes and dislikes and, like, this whole thing that, like, really help... Um, me fully get into character Definitely. and like have little quips and stuff and little ways that I do scare or don't scare or interact with other characters um, and also helps too that um, we management gives us like a sheet at dress rehearsal mm -hmm. that like helps us with our character background like what do they want why are like why do you kill people why do you you know do this whole thing what is your motivation and yeah. I think that's the biggest thing um, but yeah being a theater major really really helps yeah. Definitely helps. Because me and him did theater in uh, high school. Oh, yeah. And that was something that we loved uh, doing, especially when it was improv. You know, this guy would be like the first to step up for that. Yeah. Uh, and had so much fun. And I think it's a lot to do with, uh, with the same thing with this character, too. It's like, uh, not only do you have your essential kind of story and all that, but sometimes with scares and stuff and, mm -hmm. and interactions, you got to be kind of on the spot sometimes. Yeah, but, oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's fully improv. Um, yeah. I mean, the audition itself is improv. Oh, improv. Yeah. It's they say, okay, you're a vampire stuck in the sun, go. And you have to, like, on the off the bat, you have to go and yeah. just be crazy and improv and show what you can do. Definitely. You know? What would you say is your uh, your favorite thing overall about the Hollows? About the Hollow? Yeah. I don't know. I love so much about it. <laughs> um, I think uh, my favorite thing... Um, this isn't. Do you mean the hollow storyline wise or like the people? Let's do both. I mean, okay. I mean, there's, there's probably an answer for both. Maybe. Storyline wise, my favorite thing is the role I play. Okay. Because um, I'm one of a kind. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's no other. Well, there's another bird. But he, it doesn't. It's not the same character. But like, if you were to put him next to you, I mean, yeah, everybody would recognize. Yeah, him. it's completely different. different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and like the uh, the whole role in the story, because um, I, my specific role is that I belong to the Hag Witch. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of like she sources her power from me because I'm. If you listen closely to what they say in the um, the final show, mm -hmm. the after the witches have won, they come out on the the bridges over the water. 
and they say, um, uh, we offer this sacrifice to um, the gods who give us power and the spirits that bind us together. And that's referencing the familiars, yeah. as the spirits that bind us together. So um, I think it's fun to kind of play off of that and like have my like attitude kind of as, as I'm just walking around. Like, so I, I like having that role. It's very yeah, yeah. fun. Um, about my favorite thing about, I guess, CS in general is that we are a, a fully a family. Um, that is like our main thing. Um, everyone is family um, and we are very close. I think this year out of all the years I've worked, this is like the closest that we've been together. Um, Cause we had last year in 2018, we had um, our cast lead was not, he wasn't about what CS was about basically, putting it very nicely. Yeah. He um, tried to shut down everything, all our traditions. Um, and this year we had Keegan coming in, who was just a TC last year. And um, he was fully about it. He um, supported us and everything. And he really gathered us together. Um, and we really grew as a family. And we, like more so than ever, we all had each other's backs. Yeah. Um, and so shout out to Keegan for watching sure, this. Shout out to that guy, man. That guy is <laughs> he's, he's fantastic. Real for everyone. Absolutely. Um, uh, what would what would your advice be some that uh, for someone that maybe want to become a monster monster um, no a monster. Uh, yeah <laughs> not monster one day oh okay um, it's I would say be specific but be open um, because if you go into that audition especially at open hire and um, you say um, I want to be the the cat lady of ghost town and something like that like great you can audition that but most likely you won't get it and you have to be okay with being flexible and being put somewhere else and they might have you audition for something else um and i think too i've seen uh, uh okay how do i put this <laughs> there's we've noticed that there's been an influx of people that especially this year that came that were rookies that were kind of more so coming from the fan base. Um, but they have this idea of um, what it's like to work on without knowing what it's like to work on. Um, which is, it's not bad at all. Like we encourage all the fans to like work, work on and stuff. But um, they come in kind of having like this complex that they know everything, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I think be humble, be open, let people, even if you feel like it's not good advice, let people kind of um, help you and guide you and be open to that kind of stuff. Because yeah. um, we're all, you know, most people at Han are very cool, want to see you succeed, uh, succeed and like help you. Um, so for all those new monsters coming in, um, feel free to like reach out before if you want help or like audition ideas or something, you know. Um, yeah. We love the new people, but just don't come in and be arrogant. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah, because I think a lot of the big thing is like too is like a lot of people want to come in and join our streams. Yeah, it, it, that's like, what it's. Yeah, it's like listen, that's 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 cool that you have that like yeah. ready to go attitude and everything. It's just like if you don't get put on streets, don't be mad about it. Though. Well, people backing off of that, it's you know, it's like this attitude that's like oh, streets are nothing. You know, if I don't get streets, yeah. I'm not working. And I get that to a degree, especially for those um, that were on streets before and had to re-audition and got put in a maze. That sucks, because like, you get all this freedom one year and then, you know, then you're confined to one room. Yeah. Um, to that I say, if that's the reason that you're going to quit, you're not working on for the right reasons. Yeah, yeah. Because I know uh, there's people like you who just love Halloween, yeah. just love working the event. And I can even see it in you. If you were to get put into a maze, mm -hmm. I don't think that would. No, if I got if I got put into a maze, I would absolutely be bummed. Definitely, You'd be bummed. But it's like. But I would make it my own, and I would rock the shit out of whatever room I was yeah, in, and whatever character I was getting. Because yeah. that's, I love the event, and I want the event <coughs> to be the best. Yeah, yeah. I think and you so, follow the our, our motto of the channel: "You scare because you care." There we go. You know, and it's like it's so cliche, but it's true. You know. Oh, yeah. I it's, I love what I do. It's so much fun. Yeah, yeah. Um. No one does this for the money, really. No, yeah. I mean, maybe I mean, as money, like a side I mean, job. The money's a nice thing to have. It's oh, just, it's great. But it's like everybody's doing it because they love it. Because it's you know? so much fun. And like, yeah. I think at the end of the day, some people forget that they're getting paid. 
Oh, that fun. Yeah, I don't. I would do it without pay. Yeah, I would. I mean, I would just love to just stand there. I mean, we do it. We we were doing it this season, not even trying. We were yeah. walking down Fog Alley. People saw how tall we were, and we just get like, scared. Oh, shit. Yeah, we'd no sit on a bench. People look at us like getting scared. Like, how are you doing anything? And I know I'm not the only one that would do it if we didn't get paid. Like, yeah, yeah. Like I said, you gotta you gotta be working hard because you love it. And if you if you're one of those people that like you quit because you don't you got a maze or like you you know you go to open higher and you're not happy with the spot you get just try it yeah if it's really that bad quit mid run but i don't think that's really that good of a reason to quit yeah definitely and like uh we had a couple characters that came on that looked at uh being put into a maze for like the first year or two as like auditions yeah anyway, that's your way to prove to manage and you know honestly i think because back uh years ago at haunt it would be like you wouldn't even be considered for streets mm -hmm. unless you had done a couple years in the maze. Yeah. It's only been recently that people are like, you know, getting uh, streets from open hire, which I was lucky enough to be one of those people. But um, I, I think that I wouldn't be mad if it went back to that, to like, you know, really proving yourself, yeah, showing yeah. that you're a good talent, and being in that maze, getting that experience, especially for those of, uh, people that are coming in that ha don't have any haunt experience. Mm -hmm. Like, um, for me, I worked. I mean. In high school, I worked at a different haunt. It wasn't Scary Farm, but it was like, you know, there were a couple mazes and stuff. Excuse me. Um, so it's good to have that experience. Um, and that's how I, you know, came in and got streets from that. So, um, Riley, before we sign off, we gotta ask one last question that sure. we're trying to keep going to the channel too. Is uh, what is your favorite horror movie? Favorite horror movie? Yeah. Halloween. Halloween. It's no, my horror movie. Horror movie. That was the fastest response I've ever gotten from the channel. Oh, yeah. yeah. Easy. Down, huh? Easy. Uh, what do you think of the 2018? <laughs> I don't think of it. Wow. Really? <laughs> wow. I mean, it's not. It, huh? It's not that bad, but like the OGs, like the OGs, right? Yeah, I love yeah. it. That's awesome. Man. Halloween's a classic. Halloween, and then my favorite movie. It's not really a horror movie, but Coraline is That's my a, favorite but movie. But it's a, it's in that. You know, it's, Tim Burton, you know, you know, his animation is not going to be almost kid friendly. You know? Right. It's gonna be, that's going to have that horror aspect that. You know, a lot of people like our age were. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, that's awesome. Man. Uh, well, Riley, we want to thank you for coming on this character appreciation. Month. Yeah, and thank you guys. Yeah, sharing your stories, um, and we hope to see you next season. Um, and the end of the day, we don't look at you as a character. We look at you as our heroes. Oh, thank you. That's yeah. so sweet. Because uh, we come to these events, horror fanatics, we love horror, and we love Halloween. And for you guys to go out every day, put your bodies on the line, mm -hmm. and deal with the guests that are not easy easiest to deal with at night sometimes. Right. And just put on one of the greatest fucking shows in the world. We appreciate you guys for that. Thank we, you. We love coming to the event to support you guys, to cheer you guys on the yeah. sidelines. Uh, and we're going to continue to do so soon. At least for me to the day I die. Yeah. So I have my own kids of my own and they want to go. If they want so they have yeah, they go. So I have grandchildren that they want to <laughs> go. It's like, I'm, I'm ready for that. I'd love to hear that. That's so, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much again for taking the time out of your day to come down and talking with us with about uh, the hollow. Anytime, dude. Love, this is fantastic. It, and we can't wait to see what happens with you next year. Yeah, Me too. We're looking <laughs> we'll see. To um, if you guys are new to the channel, be sure to follow us on social media, at Nights of Four on Twitter, and at the Nights of Four on uh, Instagram. Riley, do you have social media? Do you want to I do. Yeah, all my social media is just at Riley Palmentier. There you go. I don't, oh. yeah, I don't have any of the haunt Instagrams, but we'll see. Follow oh, Riley. Maybe next year he'll, uh, maybe next year he'll post more haunts. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe he just wants you to come and come see him in person. Yeah. It's always better to come That's see him in true. person. That's you know, true. Leave it a little bit of a mystery. There you go. Ooh, I like the that. mystery. Um, of course, we have Patreon. If you guys are feeling a little extra generous, from a dollar all the way to $20, see what tiers we have to offer different uh, specialties and you need to deal with those tiers. But always for us, um, and this is going to be something that I announce right now, um, that we're probably going to announce it before this comes out, we just hit 700 subscribers today. We hit 700 finally? Wow. Yeah, we hit 700 oh. subscribers. Congrats, guys. That's yeah, rad. Thank you so much. Um, so always a subscribe, like, and comment is always enough for us because we continue to do content because we love it. We continue to talk about more because we love it. And we continue to go to these events and lose a ton of sleep. And, <laughs> you know, have to go to work the next day because we love doing it. Um, but, yeah, thanks for everyone for supporting. Thanks for all the characters who have been on thus far and who are going to be coming on uh, the next week. Yeah. The last week. The last week. The last week is great. Appreciation. It's like hot season, man. So, man Jesus. It's getting sad. <laughs> Always. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week.